So I found the, the tag information questions and stuff because um, I watched it earlier today and um, and I, I know that I knew that Shelby had done it I knew that Gina Azati had done it and um, obviously the lady who invented or wrote the tag did it because she started this um, so that's um, AG girls down under so it's nice to see another person from down under doing videos that's because um, all the all the Sims videos that I watch are actually by mostly by Australians which is really funny and they all know each other and it's it's really cool but um, I haven't seen a lot of doll videos from down in this hemisphere so it's nice to be able to see other people who are in that sort of um, situation of everyone's talking about snow and the cold and we're like yeah it's, it's summer <laughs> so, um, okay so maybe I'll do that as a separate video because um, this hmm no I'll do it now okay I'll do it now <laughs> I might edit that out if I can be bothered. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so the first question is, as a kid, did you play with dolls? If yes, what doll was your pride and joy? And if no, what toy did you play with the most? So I did have... I had a Tiny Tears doll, but I think it kind of creeped me out. Um, so they're like a cloth-bodied baby doll and when they lie down their eyes closed you know the usual deal and um, I, I I think I used to steal its clothes to put on my teddy I do still have my teddy he's in the bedroom he protects me from the monsters um, <laughs> no, basically he stops me from banging my head on the bedside table because that's that's more likely to happen um, the only monster in the bedroom at night is the cat um, notice I didn't say hubby um, and then I did have another doll that she was kind of beaten up and I don't think she had a brand or anything. She must have been like, maybe she was Tesco special, I don't know. Um, but um, my, she belonged to my sister and I really liked her because she was, she was it was like playing with another person your own age because um, I would have been about six or seven and the doll looked like a six or seven year old. So, um, for my seventh birthday, my sister very kindly cut the doll's hair because it was all ratty and gross. So she gave it a really nice bob. Um, so she would have been like 12, so she was definitely allowed to use the scissors and shit like that. And, um, and she gave me this doll. The only thing that wasn't good about that doll was that the, the plastic hip joint thing was a bit broken. And we couldn't fix it but if you put her in bloomers it kept her leg on but sometimes it would fall off and that was quite funny um and i and my dad had i think it was his grandma's doll bed and they've still got it they actually brought it over from the uk and i used to play with it all the time at my grandma and granddad's house i loved it i just really liked it. it's funny i liked making that bed but i don't make my own bed because fuck that it's just nah <laughs> i don't have to so i'm not gonna <laughs> um so oh and the doll fit perfectly in that bed and so i'd you know put sheets on her and I'd make a try and make a little outfits but i was hopeless at it but i had some i think they were rag dolls and their clothes actually fit her and they were quite sort of victorian style so my favourite thing was to listen to an audio version of The Secret Garden and like dress her up and pretend she was Mary Lennox and all that stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we also had Sylvanian families. Now they are very, still very close to my heart but I did sell off all of my Sylvanian families uh, a couple of years ago um, those of you in the States might know them as calico critters same thing different name yeah um, so we had so again it was a case that they were my sisters and then I kind of took them over uh, she's five years older than me so you know she was too cool for these toys 
and then I was getting to you know the perfect age for it but we used to make like food out of FIMO for them I've still got some somewhere that my friend made because I started recollecting them um, it was when I was with my ex and basically one of the ways that I deal with stress and depression is to buy stuff and I basically went and I rebought all of the Sylvanians that my parents had sold when we moved over to New Zealand because a lot of the ones that we had I'd actually bought with my own pocket money and I was, that was really hard and I they my mum's apologized to me so many times for it so you know I, I appreciate that she now understands especially because her brother sold her Lego when she was a kid he still denies it and that was like 60 years ago <laughs> but he sold her freaking Lego and think of uh yeah so um so she can understand and um and also because they're so adorable but um so I had all these Sylvanian families and there was an old lady who lived across the road whose granddaughter would come and stay um this is back in the UK and I made friends with her granddaughter and she was also into Sylvanians. She probably influenced me to get more into Sylvanians than I was. Um, and then we used to do like, the garden was really, really cool. Um, and I even had her permission to play in the garden when her granddaughter wasn't there. And you know, I used to go and visit this lady and sit with her while she was knitting and reading books and just talk to her about stuff. And she introduced me to Shakespeare and all this other stuff so she was really cool and um, so we do like big wedding events and have parties and it was just it was really fun and I might have been about 12 or 13 and of course in the, to be honest and where I was in the UK you did not tell people that that was what you did because uh, you knew that they would give you shit for it. Um, a lot of the girls at school were, if not actually going out and getting drunk and doing stuff with boys, then they were certainly saying that they were. And, uh, uh, like I look back on it and I'm like, it's really sad because you don't have very long as a child and it's really sad that you don't get to enjoy it because it's just not cool anymore. Um, I don't know if that was just a Bingley thing, I don't know, but anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, so Sylvanian families probably played with those even more, and the Fisher-Price little people, which now my niece plays with at my mum and dad's house, they kept those as well, it was awesome. Um, so even when I was like 12, I would still set them up or the Playmobil people or the Lego people. Um, I bought a Christmas tree with my pocket money and some fairy lights and we still have those fairy lights. I even changed the plug when we moved here so we could still use them. And I would make them sing Christmas carols around the tree and yeah, I, I would play the recorder for them so that they'd have music to sing to and yeah, I was a bit lonely. So. <laughs> it's it's a little bit cringeworthy, but it was really fun at the time. And of course, Lego, love Lego. Um, people always bought me the really girly Lego, and my sister had all the medieval stuff. So um, basically, we've decided that all the Lego lives at Mum and Dad's house now. Um, but she used to divide the bricks up by color, <laughs> and that drove me mad because I want them in set. So I actually found about 10 years ago, wow that's so long ago, I found a website where they had all of the 19, because uh, we've got the, like the 1985 castle with the drawbridge that goes up and down and I went through and I located all of the pieces because they, they had the instructions on a website and I was like this is, this is gold. So I think I printed it out as well and gave it to my dad and I sorted all the Lego out into the different um, little sets and so Robin Hood's hideout has all its pieces and it's in this one box and it's in a bag in the box to keep it all together and I think my sister threw a fit because she'd had it all organized by color 
it just just goes to show we're all a little bit neurotic in my family at least um you know she she has to use the same colored pegs on her clothes when she's hanging washing out i just don't hang washing out but i you know i've got i've got my quirks and my mum's got her quirks of she likes to line things up perpendicular to the edge of the table so we've got a, a circular table <laughs> it drives her mad it's brilliant <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Lego Sylvanians, um, the neighbour across the road had a wicked Meccano collection from when her kids used to play with it. Oh, she also had like um, a methylated spirits um, powered traction engine. I think it was her, unless it was my granddad that had it. Because she, yeah. So someone had one that we used to get a get to play with it sometimes but that was more just sort of scientific but that's one that really stands out to me and then of course most um, the rest of the time I was just playing climbing trees and making dens and playing stupid games with my cousins so that was yeah um, so yeah the kinds of, so that goes on to question number two which was what kind of games did you play with your toys well I used to do secret garden um, not so much the Little Princess, because um, that story wasn't as cute. I didn't like it as much. Whereas the whole the idea of there being a secret garden, it just I really like gardens and flowers, even though I burn to a crisp as soon as I go outside. Um, so I don't know, it just appealed to me. Um, and yeah, Christmas is just just playing like normal doll games oh oh my god how could I forget so the first real dolls plural that we played with um, we had Cindy's um, no we were definitely a Cindy household and not a Barbie household it, it's really weird how you sometimes get that um, but so we had I had swimming Cindy <laughs> so you could wind her arms up and you put her in the bathtub and her arms go like it's like those little toys that you make with the elastic bands and she just go vroom except um she kind of went sideways so we kept telling her she wouldn't win in the olympics because her style was too bad <laughs> so lame. And, my, and my sister had a bunch where uh i think she had an older one where it had sort of I want to say crispy hair, like the hair had gone all dried out and weird and it was like a bad perm. And I think she tried to dye it with with um, blue crepe paper, so she ended up with a blue rinse, like Shelby was talking about the dolls with the blue rinse. This is exactly what it was like. And um, so she became a character from the, you know, the soap opera Neighbours from Australia. It was, and I don't know if it still is, but really popular in the UK. And we would watch it every day. I think it was on after Blue Peter or something, which um, I managed to get my sister to watch Under Sufferance because otherwise I'd make a big deal about having to watch Neighbours, but I secretly really liked Neighbours, but yeah. Um, so uh, we used to reenact episodes of Neighbours and so we had a couple of the, the male dolls so there was like Paul who I think is still in it but I can't remember because they stopped showing it or they changed the channel or something and um, so they did Scott and Charlene's wedding and uh, all that kind of thing so <laughs> yeah it was that was about that I must have actually been quite young because that was when my sister was still playing with the dolls. Um, I think she kind of stopped when she was about thirteen. you know it just wasn't cool anymore um and she really got into her sports and yeah, so I got all the Cindys and then Mum and Dad gave them all away when we moved to New Zealand, and we got maybe a five or each for all our Cindy stuff, which was probably worth hundreds of pounds. So I've managed to sort of replicate some of that stuff with the Blythes, but um, yeah. <laughs> um, so we didn't, yeah, 
So we had stories for them, but they weren't our stories. They were just lifted straight from TV. Uh, <laughs> and um, so that's... So I've kind of covered one, two, and three, because number three was, were there any dolls or toys that you loved before BJDs? Well, yeah. Um, Cindy's and Sylvanians and, of course, my Blythe's. Um, yeah. Yes, of course. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Playmobil, Lego. We're probably a little bit spoiled, actually, but we, you know, we were the only grandchildren on one side of the family. So, and um, we had lots of great aunts and uncles that spoiled us, so that was nice. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so did you have a story before your dolls? Yes, I had Annabelle's story from before I even knew about BJDs. So, yeah. Um, and I'm still working on it and I haven't done any writing on it since like that first Friday of NaNoWriMo and I'm really disappointed in myself but at the same time I just don't have the energy. Um, and I think sometimes arbitrary deadlines are kind of counterintuitive. You know, it's almost like, well, I don't actually have to do it, so I'm even less likely to do it. So you can go away and start telling me that I have to do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty stubborn. <laughs> um, if you could change anything you did in the, in the past that's BJD related, what would you do? I don't know. Um, I wouldn't have listed the um, Lilas for sale as soon as I'd got her because of um, I should have I should have given her more of a chance but at the end of the day it's turned out fine because she's still with me and I love her she still needs a name but I do love her I, yeah, I have to go I have to turn and look at her because she knows I'm talking about her yeah <laughs> no I'm not quite that bad um, not so not really I guess maybe I'd have gotten into the hobby earlier. Um, you know, I was I was aware of BJDs because um, the DOA um, stuff on face ups is actually quite helpful with regard to blithes, and I joined a couple of years ago, so I just didn't really use it because you know forums are kind of dying, and and I just use the tutorials, um, and. Yeah, I, I, let's let's not talk about DOA, unless it's Dead or Alive, which is a ridiculous game and a ridiculous movie. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. I can't really say there's anything I would have changed, apart from maybe getting into it sooner. But I don't think I was ready. Um, don't know. Sorry. <laughs> so that's the end of that uh, thingy tag. So that's my first tag, I think, because I don't usually do them. Um, because I don't. I only have three BJDs. <laughs> she can stand next to Nathan Fillion. The camera keeps focusing on his face. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and I'm in my scruffies because it's Sunday. So, yeah.